Welcome to this introduction to Microsoft Visio. In this module, I'm going to show you some of the basic concepts in Visio. This is the home screen, and I'm going to use this template, basic diagram template. You've also got other templates, which I'll go through at a later date. But first of all, this one, I'm double clicking, and it will create me a basic drawing template. What you have when you open a template, any template, is a list of stencils that appear down this left hand side. You also get different options at the top there where it's got more shapes, where you can bring different shapes from different um, templates into this one. So quick shapes for this template and then basic shapes like so all the way down. Now different templates will have a different number of stencils. You can search for a shape by typing whatever you want to search for and then clicking on this little magnifying glass and it will look through all the other templates for whatever you've typed in there. And you can see the car has brought back a few different results. They will not disappear until you click that cross off there to get rid of them to bring back the basic default stencil. Now, if you go to more shapes, these are all the other stencils that you have in different diagrams. At the top there, you've got my shapes, and these are things that I've created, lots and lots of different ones. But under business, for example, you've got these sort of shapes that you can select by just highlighting this and then clicking on whichever one. So if I go for business process and, um, or go for this one, charts, charting shapes, if I click on that, that inserts the charting shapes stencil into this diagram and that's how that works now if you right click on that stencil and click on close that will get rid of it otherwise it will stay with this diagram once you save it now how do you use Visio? if I click on basic shapes and just um, show you how this bit works if you pull on a shape so you just drag and drop that shape appears on the screen. You've got these resizing handles that you can adjust. You can also change the rotation. But this is a rectangle. It will always be a rectangle. It does not become a square because this is a square and it will always be a square no matter how big you make it or how small you make it. All of these shapes have text boxes attached to them. You can just type like so and it defaults in the center. But on the ribbon, you've got some tools where you can adjust the location of that text box like so. Now, this area, tools, has some really useful features. The pointer tool is default. That means you can click and drag and move things around. As you do do that, you'll see these little lines appearing on the screen, which is telling you that it's lined up left, right, or center whichever way you want to do it. So it's quite useful to have that. At the moment, I haven't got the grids on this document. If I go to the View tab, you can tick these things on or off. It's up to you. I want the grid on. So that's the grid line. You don't have to have that on, but it's just easier to line things up if you do. So let's put that on there, and then I can reline these up. It's a bit more of a visual indicator. Go back to home. Now, connecting things. There's two main connectors. If I click on the connector tool, when you hover over a shape, you get these little connector points, and the whole shape's gone green. But if I sit my mouse on one of the connector points and then drag to another connector point on this other one, as soon as you see the point option coming up. So you've got point to point, which is what I've just done there. Now I've still got this. If I draw, I just create a line. So I need to knock this off. I'll just delete that. You go back to the point tool. Because I went from point to point very carefully, that means it will always be connected to that point. Always be connected to that point. Now, if I want to do a shape to shape connector, which it tried to do there. If I just bring two different shapes on, I'll bring two squares on. Shape to shape, if I click on that, the whole thing has gone green, so I'm not 
I'm not isolating one of these glue points. I'm going from a green shape, a green selected shape, to another green selected shape. It says there, glue to shape. Let go, put the pointer tool back on. Now when I move around, it will always go to the shortest distance between the two shapes. That's the difference. That will always be the shortest between the two shapes, whereas this one will always connect to where I sent it to, so from that point to that point. That's a point to point, that's a shape to shape. They're the two main connect connection tools. Now let's just highlight these two for a second and delete them, don't need them now. Go back to this, bring that over there. You've got this text tool, if I click on that, basically that allows you to draw a text box, which you can then type in, and you can fill it in with whatever colour you want, really. Um, and I've clicked that again. Look, every time I click that, it's going to do a text box. So I've got to keep doing that. Can be slightly irritating when you first get into Visio that it does that. What I've just done there is created a, a text box, which I don't really need to do because it's on the shape there. So you could just bring the shape in and utilise that. Because if you're then going to go and start doing borders and things like that if I just make this a bit uh, a bit thicker so you can see it you've got a blue border there you can do all of that I could do exactly the same on there without drawing a text box so it's just an extra extra thing that you're doing there so I'll do a blue border you can see that so I've achieved exactly the same but it is a feature now coming across on that you've got this text block tool if I click on that what this is about is sitting on a text block, which is default, and then moving it. So I'll do it on this one. So I'll move this one so you can see it moving off. Now if I move it too far off because the text is white, you won't see the text. So I'll just leave it in the top right -hand corner, like so. And again, I'll go back up to the pointer tool to knock that off. So I've just moved it into the top right -hand corner. If I click on that again, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just change the font colour to black so it sits as black and then you'll see it better. If I click on that, move that over so it's, I move it right over, so it's completely off the shape and knock that off, back to pointer. Now if I move this around, you see the text block is still moving with it because it's part of it, but it's off-centred, it's off the box. So that's what that's for. And let me just get rid of this line. I thought to delete that shape now. I've messed it up and I'll delete that. I'll bring myself another square on, like so. Now you've got this little tool at the top there where you've got rectangle. You might think, why would I draw a rectangle if I can just pull one from there? But there are occasions that you might want to do that. So I'll just draw a rectangle across the bottom there. Now these, these shapes from here do not have connector points. So if I click on this, there's a connector point. If I click on that, there aren't any. There's no connection points. So that's what this is for. To add more connection points or add new ones if there aren't any. So I'm going to click on that. And basically what you have to do is position your cursor, hold your control key down and you'll see a little cross and then just click and then just check that you've got done that on there that it moves with the shape because sometimes you can click and it's slightly off so i'll do that again so i'll have two connection points in the middle on this little tool just click there I'll just check that if i move this that doesn't move away right so i've got two points there so if i go to the connector tool i can come from this shape and snap it into that one the to connection point is what you're looking for and then from this one onto that one. Now that says glue to shape. I don't want to glue to shape. I want to glue to the connection point. There it was there. Yeah. Remember shape to shape. It just always goes to the shortest distance. So let's just have a look at this. Yeah, so that's that's worked. That's point to point. This one should be also point to point. If I move it over here, it maintains that connection. That's what that tool's for. 
adding extra shapes. Now, if I just highlight all of these, get rid of these for a second, and just bring myself another shape on there, and then I'll bring a circle, sit it on top, change the color of the circle so you can see it, and then uh, bring a triangle, like so. Now, if I highlight all of these, if I highlight all of these, and then just right click, you've got the group option where you can make these into one item like that. So that now is one shape. And then you can add any shape that you created, not that that's a great shape, but you can add any shape that you create to a stencil. But at the moment, you can't edit these stencils, you have to create your own. If I go to more shapes, and then down the bottom there, you've got new stencil US, new stencil metric. I'll go for that one. And then I can just pull this and drop it into there. It comes up with master two. I'll just call it my shape. And that's what it'll be called. And then I can just pull it on as many times as I want onto the diagram like so. Now you can also, it's not saved yet and I've not named it, but you can also go to these stencils or any stencil that you want to search from and drag any shape so i'm just going to drag that over the title it will then open up like, like a drawer and you just drop it in there so you can bring things in from other stencils by just dragging holding it on top of there and then dropping it in now when i'm happy i save it it will ask me to save it in with the rest of my shapes i'll call it um my shapes two no doubt i've got one called one and i just save it in there and then that's saved if i want to close it i can close it if i want to open it now i go to more shapes and open stencil and then it will be in the list with the rest of them so my shapes two there it is and then we're back into it and then you can add or drag from it however you want to utilize it I'll just close that off. Close. Now across the top on some of these shapes, if I just get rid of these, I'll go back to basic shapes and bring a square on again. You have got some different features where you can look at effects and under effects, you've got shadow, for example, and you can just pick a different shadow. I'll pick that one. And then if you go back into it, shadow, options, and then you can play around with the options. So you can have a, you've got presets, you've got different color for the shadow, or pick red so it stands out a little bit. See that there. And then you've got size, you can play around with this, make it a little bit, bit not that big, but like bigger. You've got the blur, you can play around with that got the angle of it come back this way whichever way you want to do and then you've got the distance you can pull that off as well so all of these tools are that are available if you create a shadow effect in there you've got these other options they're listed down the bottom there because we've come into the effects all of these tools are to make your diagram a little more engaging or not totally up to you but there's quite a lot of different things that you can use in there. Now if I come off this for a second, close that. You've also got the ability, if you go to, um, well, insert, first of all, let's have a look at that. Insert, you've got the different options of putting things into parts, like these are called containers. So if I just drag that over and drag that over, I can then just do a container, I click on that option, you've got loads of different options, I'll pick one fairly simple, so I've just put one of whichever I had selected in there, I can move that other one in there. Now the container tab has appeared, once you lock the container, you basically can't move shapes out of it, it just makes the container bigger. If you want to do anything else, you need to unlock the container and then that'll let you move things out like that. So that's the container. I'll just get rid of that for a minute. We'll have a look at insert again. So you've got the ability to bring in pictures and charts, all the things that you would expect to do with Microsoft things. 
text box is just another place of doing a text box and objects. On the design tab, what you've got is actual themes. If I bring us a square on and a rectangle again, and then you can change the actual theme. If I click on that one, it's sitting there. You can see exactly what it's going to do. And you've got all these other ones preloaded. I quite like that one, to be honest, so I'll go for that one. And then you've got different variants on it. We can play around with these if you so wish. Now, over on the right there, the last thing I want to look at is the border and background. So I'll go for background first. These are preset backgrounds. There's a world. What happens here is when you click on that, it creates what's called a background page, which is this. So that's page one, and that's the background page. The background page is just the world. So this is where you would put your logo, and you can create background pages. If I just right-click on this page and go into page setup, for example, it'll say that's the name of the page. So I could call that something, so I'll call that main. And it's looking at that background, which is the world. And it's this first page is a foreground. If I clicked on that other one, it'd say it was a background. So I'll just click OK to that. It's named out, but it's still looking at that. Now, also, you've got borders. So this is just a quick way of putting borders on. So I'll just click on that, and it's put the border on there. Now, I'm trying to click, and I can't, because the actual border sits in the background as well. And then I can just type that, call it Steve, and you can see everything else that's on there. Back to the main page. And I can move these shapes around. I can change the layout of these shapes and the colour of everything by picking a different theme. That's quite bright. But that's it for this. That's just a quick introduction to the basic template in Microsoft Visio.